Hi, everybody. What we're going to do is do a quick video to kind of walk through the solution for assignment four. Uh, my hope is by doing these videos and kind of explaining everything, uh, you'll understand uh, a little bit more and you'll understand a little bit more on how you approached it versus how I approached it and ho hopefully learn from that, okay, as you move forward. All right, so for this particular problem, you're asked to take uh, original price and percent off and based upon cementing of the button, button here, uh, they want you to actually say that the actual uh, final price for it, okay? An example is sitting down here. So if I put $100 in with 20% off, it would end up as $80. Does that make sense? All right, that's what you're being asked to do. So if we go back to our program checklist, the very first thing we should be doing, hopefully you're screaming it out as you're listening to this, is that we need to identify our inputs. So our inputs in this case is original price and percent off, all right? Not too hard, all right? Once again, based upon the complexity of the problem, you may need to really read everything and make sure you have all your inputs and you included everything that be an input. This particular situation is rather easy and it's supposed to be, but as time goes on, it won't be as easy, I guess I should say. You might have to read a little bit deeper and make sure you completely identify your inputs as such. Your next piece will then be outputs. In this case here, we have sales price. Pretty simple. The third step, obviously, is to look at uh, is there, are there any assumptions? And in this particular problem, there probably is an assumption. One of the assumptions that you need to make sure of is how they're going to enter the percent off, as a whole number or as a decimal. Meaning, if you put 20% off in there, will you put a 20 in there or will you put a 0 0.10 or a 0 0.20? In that case, that would actually have implications on our program, so we probably really need to know that. It really makes no difference which way you went with this on your particular program. You just need to make sure you handled it correctly in your code so it actually works, okay? The next step is putting your, uh, your outputs in logical order. Again, I'm just reciting the uh, design checklist we talked about this week. But we have no logical order here. We only have one output. That's not going to last very long, meaning that here soon you'll have programs that's going to have multiple outputs and you really need to consider the logical order in which we're actually solving. Because we have everything done, we have everything in this order, all we're really doing is actually solving for sales price. So then we get into our pseudocode. As I stated before, our pseudocode starts uh, with getting our inputs. That's where you always start. As I mentioned before, sometimes students always ask, where do I start? Well, Go get your inputs, get that going. So we got original price and percent off and then go ahead and solve for each output one at a time. In this case, to solve for sales price is original price times in parentheses, remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, one minus the percent off. In this case, I'm going to assume we're gonna put it in as 0 .10, 0.10 or 0 0.20 or so on. If I didn't do that, I would have to divide percent off by 100. OK, I will show you when we get to the program uh, how you can handle that either way. All right. Based upon how you accept those inputs. So in the end, my test case here and we'll talk about test cases a little bit uh, in the next in the next week is I got original price of 100. OK, I got a percent off of 0 0.10. And I got a sales price that actually equals $90. And that's what that's what we're assuming is going to work. So a very simple design, but at least one we can actually practice on, okay, versus just diving into the code. So I ask you, how many of you just dove into the code versus designing it first? I bet you there's several hands going up. I do not recommend that, especially when we start getting into more complex problems. Practice this now. Our next step that you were taught was now to identify the variables we're going to be using. In this case here, we identify our inputs and our outputs, correct? So we have original price, and then what so, and then uh, so that's where we have original price, percent off, and sales price will be our variables. The next step is the data types. So what would original price be? Since it's currency, all currency should be decimals, okay? Not integers. Integers will not have a 0, .00 afterwards, and we want that. So anytime you're dealing with currency, always make sure it's a decimal. Percent off would be the same thing. You can keep it as a whole number if you like, based upon how you're going to do this, uh, but I'm going to treat it as a decimal, okay? Not decimals. 
And then finally, our sales price. Once again, it's a currency, so we'll keep that as a decimal. Make sense? All right, well, let's get into the code and look at how we actually solve this. So in this case here, I have my original price and percent off with my output right here. All right, uh, with that, and so that's pretty much how this kind of, I have set up. I actually gave you the, uh, the look and the feel of this particular form. I expect this form to look like this. Once again, very symmetric, very small. You don't need big things. You don't need to make them big. Keep it very concise and very easy to read and very easy to use. On my submit button, I'm going to come over here and using my design, I'm going to declare my variables. Okay. I know I have double here. These should actually be decimals. I'm going to tell you this right now. If when you see the word double, that is the exact same thing as a decimal. And maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But right now, I don't want to confuse you with this. But if you see the word double, double is a decimal in Visual Basic. Okay. And so you can use either one, double or decimal, it makes no difference. Uh, but, you know, we'll go ahead and do what, you're, what I kind of taught you up to this point. And this should be, you know, that way. Okay, D-O-B-D, D-B-C. Not to mess up this program too badly. I'll just keep it that way. All right. I'm going to get my inputs. I'm going to take my inputs off my screen and stick them into my variables. Okay. I have my input variables. So I need to go to my interface and problem submission. Whatever they typed in there, we will take whatever they put in there, which is actually then located in the dot text uh, property, and it will now go to these particular variables. That's how this works. Remember, everything's top down. In this case here, I'm assuming I'm going to bring things in as a, as a uh, decimal, and in doing so, I can just say one minus whatever I put in there times this, exactly how I designed it. And then finally, I'm going to do uh, book my label and use format currency to format it. And if I run this, run this, whoops. Uh, if I run this and I put 100 and I put 0.10, you will see uh, $90. Yay me. Okay. If you assume that it was going to come in as a... Uh, a whole number, you would have to divide this this way, okay? Is there ways to, you know, determine that? The answer is yes, you can. We can actually validate for it to ensure that they enter it the way you want them to enter it, but right now we're not quite there yet. So it has to be an assumption one way or the other, or really you're going to ask your user. Whichever way you did it is fine, but if you enter it as a whole number, we're going to have to divide it by 100, right? In these parentheses here, this needs to be done first before you actually subtract it. And so this is how this would look like. And so in this case here, if we start this and we put 100 and we put 10 in there versus 0.10, you'll see that actually works also. Pretty cool. All right. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see. The clear button, it should be uh, whatever my inputs were, clear. Okay. And the focus. More than likely, we should also have an LBL uh, reset text to actually clear everything else out, okay? And there you go. All right, focus basically puts the cursor back to the original text box, the very first text box. This way it prevents the user from uh, having to click on that text box. They can just start typing. If I give you an example of this, 1-0 and press submit, okay? And then clear, you see the focus is back to the text box. See how the cursor's sitting there? And I can just start typing right off the bat. All right, so how'd you do? Hopefully pretty well. Uh, but if you got stuck on a few things, don't fret yet. These are some of your first programs still. Uh, yeah, you got to get used to this right here. Some people always tell me, well, I'm not good at math. I, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how complicated that is math-wise. I guess understanding how to take a percent is something you need to understand. But if you don't understand, you can always ask the questions, okay? Once again, you don't have to be an expert at everything that you're programming. You just need to understand what it is that you're programming, okay? So don't get too concerned if uh, you didn't quite understand how to deal with percent offs, okay? That's, that's not something you should be concerning yourself with. What I really wanted to see is, did you design it correctly? Did you, you take your design and transform it into uh, this button click with these four different sections as taught? And if you did that, you're well on your way, okay?